our last two number theory topics deal with things that occur again and again and again in the elementary classroom, and they are very important when we start dealing with fractions. The first one is a greatest common divisor. So in a previous video, you might remember that I defined a divisor as is a number that divides evenly into another given number. So we're going to look at two different methods for this. One of them is called intersection of sets. And that's just thinking about what are all the divisors of a number. And the other one is you can actually examine the prime factors to get right at the greatest common divisor. So first off, though, what in the world do we mean by greatest common divisor? Now, here's my strange answer. What we mean is greatest common divisor. In other words, it's, it's a self-explanatory thing. Greatest, the very largest number that has a common divisor between two or more numbers. I'll say that once again, it's the greatest number that is a common divisor of a set of two or more numbers. So let me provide you with some examples. So the notation for it, many times we use GCD for greatest common divisor. If someone asks you, what is the greatest common divisor of let's say um, six and uh, 21? What they're really asking you is, what is the very largest number that divides evenly into both six and 21. Now, something like this, you could probably do it in your head. You could figure it out. You could just say, well, the answer is three because three divides into six and three divides into 21. Um, sometimes it may not be quite as obvious if the list gets a little bit bigger. Let me give you a different example. Let's say I said, what is the greatest common divisor of maybe a set of three numbers? So maybe not so obvious. What if I did, um, well, let's do eight and 20 and 28. Maybe it is still obvious, maybe it's not. I wanna go over the intersection of sets method though with you so you can at least see it when the numbers are small. So in intersection of sets, what you do is you list out the divisors of each of the numbers in question. In this case, there's three numbers, eight, 20, 28. And we use the notation capital D to represent divisor. So I would say, what are all the divisors of eight? What are all the numbers that divide evenly into eight? And I make a list. Well, one goes into eight because one goes into everything. Two goes into eight, four goes into eight, and eight goes into eight, all right? Um, and, and you can notice that one times eight is, is eight and two times four is eight. There's kind of this linking thing going on there. If you look at the other numbers in question here, the divisors of 20, there's a few more for 20. 20 has several divisors. One times 20, two times 10, three does not go into 20, but four does. It goes in five times. And then we have all the divisors here. One times 20, two times 10, four times five. So this one has six different divisors. Lastly, the divisors of 28. 28 is divisible by one, by two, by four, by seven, two times 14, and one times 28. Well, greatest common divisor. What are the divisors they have in common? Well, they all have a one. They all have a two. They all have a four. And that's all that they all have, right? None of the other numbers necessarily is in each list. What is the greatest of all the ones that they have in common? What is the greatest common divisor? Well, it's the last one that I highlighted. It's four. And that's intersection of sets. You basically are listing out all of the divisors and choosing the one that's the very largest that they all have in common. Let's look at a second method called prime factorization. Prime factorization is where you prime factor a number and examine those prime factors to see if you can learn something about it. Okay, so um, just to illustrate it for the purposes of tying it to the previous problem, I'm going to use this same set of numbers that I just used, 8, 20, and 28. So if you were asked that question, but you wanted to use this method, let's see how it comes out. What is the greatest common divisor, again, of 8? It's kind of a messy 8. Let's see if I can do better. 8. 20 and 28. Well, we already know the answer, but let's just pretend like we don't. So um, what you do is you take each number and you look at its prime factors. Eight would be two times two times two. Now you can do a factor tree to figure that out. 20 ends up being two times two times five. And then 28 happens to be two times two times seven. What do they all have in common? Well, they all have a two. In fact, they all have two twos. So the greatest common divisor is the thing, right, that they all have. They all have two twos. And so the greatest common divisor is two times two or four. 
same answer. Now, it may not seem like either of these methods are necessary, and that's because the numbers are relatively small. When the numbers get much larger, you'll see that um, one of these two methods may seem better. So let's take a look at one last example where you might want to think about what, are, what is the difference between the two. All right. Greatest common divisor. Let's use two numbers, um, and I have my calculator here because I had this number in mind after we calculate it. Let's see. Let's say the first number is 504. Okay. And then second number is 420. What is the very largest number, the greatest number, that is a divisor of these two numbers? In other words, it divides evenly into both. Wow. Well, if you use the intersection of sets, imagine trying to list out all of the numbers that divide into these. You might even have a hard time doing it. You might easily forget some of the divisors of 420, for example, or 504. Maybe they have a bunch of divisors. And how would you know? Like, does A go into 504? Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. And so it can be kind of troubling. I think when the numbers are large, the, the prime factorization method is pretty Nice, so let's take a look at how that could be used here. So what you do is you make a prime factor tree for both until you have them prime factored. Well, what goes into 504? You may not know, but you might notice that it's even. So I'm gonna divide it by two and it's 252, okay, got that. Hey, look, it's still even. I'll divide it by two again, it's 126. Okay, it's still even, I'll divide it by two again, 63. Now, hopefully a lot of you are recognizing 63 as nine times seven. And then nine becomes three times three. And so I have all my prime factors. 504 is, I'm gonna write it on this side of the screen, made up of, if you count them, there's one, two, three twos, okay? Two threes and a seven. Now we're gonna do the same thing with 420. I noticed that this one ends in zero and I remember from, that years gone by that 42 times 10 would make that. So that was helpful. 10 would be two times five. Okay, that's prime, that's prime. 42 is on my times table list as six times seven. Seven is prime and the six becomes two times three. And so what I've learned here is that 420 is made up of two twos, a three, a five and a seven. And then the question is just, what do the, what is the greatest number of factors that they have in common? All right, and what they have in common, those are divisors. They both have two twos. They both have a three, and that's it. Those are the things that make up the greatest common divisors, two twos and a three. If you multiply all that together, you get 12. That's my answer. I'm done. The very largest number that will divide into both is 12. I hope you see the difference between the two and are able to decide which, what time, which one is more powerful than another.